Hello, it's Thursday the 25th of June. For the last several weeks, our house has been the scene of a battle of wills. Each combatant sees itself as having more of an entitlement than its opponent, and there has been constant suspicion and tension. There has rarely been open conflict, but it's been obvious that there are unresolved issues and resulting hostility between the two sides. And the noise from the quarrel has even extended into our bedroom. But you may by now be relieved to hear this is not about a domestic dispute, at least not in the usual sense. Rather, it is about who occupies the space beneath the eaves of our house. Last year, a pair of house martins successfully reared a family in a nest just outside our bedroom window. But this year, even before the martins arrived back from Africa, a male sparrow had decided this ready-made nest was just the place into which to entice his partner and loudly proclaimed this for hours on end, starting each day at about 5am. Let me declare my bias. I am for the martins. They're in decline as a species. So too are sparrows, we are told, but whoever did that survey didn't visit our garden. The martins are beautiful, graceful birds with a delightful, chittering sound, and I love to see them diving and soaring in the breeze. The sparrows, on the other hand, are constantly quarrelsome and just chirrup monotonously from 5am, had I mentioned that. And they try to steal the benefits of someone else's hard work. Ornithological sponges, even thugs, you might say. So I confess to having assisted the Martins in their claim to the territory of the nest. I won't say exactly how I did this, as it might just possibly have been illegal, but suffice to say no eggs were taken and no birds were harmed in the process, frustrated perhaps, but not harmed. Anyway, the signs are that the Martins are now safely in residence, even rearing a family, and I am reinterpreting the sparrow's continual chirruping as a protest rather than a claim. So I wonder what Jesus thought about sparrows. Why did he say that his father noticed when one sparrow fell to the ground, as we might have heard in Sunday's reading? Did he think of them as quarrelsome, lazy, greedy, loud bullies? Weren't the beautiful and graceful birds, swallows and house martins, for example, more worthy of God's attention? Apparently not. It seems that God experiences a particular kind of regret when a sparrow falls, and presumably the human equivalent too, those not too scrupulous about exploiting others for their own ends, those prepared to cut a few corners to get what they want, those who didn't pay very much attention to the rules of lockdown. For those of us who would like to think of ourselves as having more of the character of a house martin than a sparrow, that may come as something of a shock. But then the gospel has always shocked people when they realise that, unlike me, God loves the sparrows just as much as the house martins, that he loves the sinners just as much as the righteous. So, we've put up some bird boxes for the sparrows too, okay. Let's pray. Merciful God, some of us may have tried to cultivate the outward appearance of a house martin, but we confess there is still a lot of sparrow character hidden inside. Have mercy on us, Forgive and renew us so that we may possess and show to all the true beauty of the mind and the love of Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.